time for movie mode. All right, guys, so I just wanted to explain movie mode in a little more detail here for those wondering about that particular mode. Now, uh, if you go to movie mode on the dial here, which I just showed you, if you hit the function button, you can then select right here what kind of exposure mode you want to use for your filming. Now, right now it's aperture priority mode. You have a couple of different options here, and they'll explain to you what each option means. Aperture priority is just, you know, you get to control the aperture. Depth of field is a little bit more controllable in that mode. And shutter priority mode is you can control the shutter speed and get precise, you know, values to the actual shutter speed while you're recording. And that is very helpful in a lot of ways, especially with water. You want to slow things down, create blur, things like that. Manual mode gives you full power, so you can control everything independently. Now, P mode is just going to be program auto. The camera's going to decide what it thinks is best. And for the most part, I've been using this mode unless I want to do something specific, okay? So now when you're in this mode, if you hit the function menu again, you also have some options here. You can change your focus area, right? You can do this in video mode. So you can select which type of focus area you want. I've been using expandable flexible spot and then I've been using the touch screen to control where I want the focus. That's how I've been using it so far but depending on your needs you might want to just use wide area. You know if you're doing like you want the whole scene to be active basically wide area will do that for you and then the camera will decide on what to focus on. Now, here's the movie record button right here, so you just hit that button to start recording, and it'll start recording no matter what mode you're in, pretty much, but uh, you really want to be in the video mode up top, so you have access to the audio signals and things like that, so you can stand by, it'll tell you, and um, right here is a little X on the screen letting you know that the focus point is active, and if you hit the display button here, you can change the way the display looks. See that? So you can get a live histogram view if you want and you have a leveler here so just keep hitting the display button to change that around for video I've been using this mode right, right here I've been liking that one the best um, just because it's simplistic and the, inf only, the only information I really need is on the bottom here and I tend to use auto ISO as well I let the camera float the ISO as needed uh, it just makes it much easier I tend to do it that way uh, a couple other things I want to show you if you go into your menu here, on 2 on the top there, you got page 1 of 10, all right? And here's where most of your format settings are, okay? So you have file format. This is where you would select your 4K and your uh, non-4K here, just your SHD. And then this is the lowest quality here. I'll just leave it here for now. This is where you can select your different frame rates and data amount. So 60p at 50 meg, 60p at 20, and then you got 30, and then 24, of course. Then you have 120p as well, which is great for slow motion. And you have 100 meg, 120p. That's a really powerful uh, feature there. But a lot of people are using 60p these days, so I'm just going to select that for now. A couple other options here that you need to see for video. You have AF drive speed. See this? You can change this, and this is for video and you have track se track sensitivity as well auto slow shutter bunch of options in here okay steady shot you have different steady shot modes so you can change it this is basically your stabilization okay you can change it to all these different modes i prefer to keep it on active and or intelligent active when using this mode and 4k by the way when you're in 4k this is not available you only have standard or off all right so the the digital stabilizations are not available you also have marker display settings here, a couple other options, steady shot on or off. Now zoom settings, I have it set to optical zoom, but you can go in here and you can do clear image zoom and you can do digital zoom as well to get a lot of extra. Clear image zoom quality is very, very good. I highly recommend using this. Digital zoom is actually not too bad either, but it's you do notice some degradation, but clear image zoom looks really good. So that's like a equivalent to 1200 millimeters when you have this on. All right, I'm doing some uh, testing, so I just want to leave it to optical right now. But you also have zoom speed here. This is a very important feature because normally it's set, it's a default set to normal, and the zoom is incredibly slow in video. It does create awesome effects when doing slow pans and things like that. So I think that's why Sony decided to make that the default. But if you're trying to track subjects and stuff like that, you're definitely going to want it to fa have it on fast mode, in my opinion. This is currently set to fast. All right, guys, now I have the zoom speed set to normal, and I'm going to zoom out, and you can see just how slow it goes. So it's a drastic difference. 
from slow to fast. I prefer fast most of the time. If you keep scrolling over, you have zebra function. That's where this op that option is for your more advanced users. And that's pretty much it for the movie settings. So now let me just show you the 4K file format quick. And basically when you go down to the 4K mode, you have much fewer options here in the record setting area. So you can do 30p or 24p. There's no 60p, unfortunately. A lot of people wanted this camera to have 60p in 4K, and it just does not. A couple other settings I wanted to show you in the function menu here. This is where you can change your metering mode. I have a video about metering modes and ISO right here. Like I said, I have that set to auto, but you can go in there and manually set it to a hard number if you like. You have some picture effects here you can do, and you have picture profiles here. For those looking for the S-Log formats and you're going to, you know, you're a more advanced user, you're going to grade the video in post-processing, your picture profiles are in here, okay? And I'll bring up the list real quick and to show you what each of these means. But basically PP8 and PP9 are your S-Log 3s and uh, that's where that option is. So it's easy to get to right in the function menu on default. You can custom configure this function menu as well, but by default it's really good. Creative style, you can go in here and change the way your video looks as well by selecting Vivid, for example. And they have a bunch of other features in there, different options. Standard is default. It's going to leave it there for now. And then you have Dynamic Range Optimizer. I have this set to Auto. Basically, this just helps fill in the shadows a little bit and tame the highlights when needed. And it, overall, it works really well, but if you want more control, you can turn that off. And, of course, White Balance here. Now, if you go into White Balance, you can dial it in. You can set custom white balances here, or you can just go to the temperature mode and scroll over to the right, and that'll actually highlight the temperature, and you can scroll it into whatever you want. Okay? And I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you actually go to record, all right? So, like I said, you just got to hit this record button here. I'm going to hit record. And now she's filming. And like I was saying, how I like to use it, I'm just using the touch screen with the flexible spot, the expandable flexible spot, and you can just touch around the screen and it will automatically focus where you touch. And I have the AF drive mode set to fast as well. And another little trick, just so, no, so you know, you can pull the screen out here like so. I just pulled it out towards the camera that I'm filming with. And now when you touch it, the screen itself will flex a little bit as opposed to when it's pushed in all the way, when you touch it, it's gonna like, it'll shake the camera more. So I find that if you have the screen out a little bit, when you touch, the shake is that much less. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Please be sure to subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video below. If you want any other tutorials on this particular camera while I have it, please let me know. I got about another two weeks with it. All right, take care, have a good one. And now she's filming. And like I was saying, how I like to use it, I'm just using the touch screen with the flexible spot, the expandable flexible spot, and you can just touch around the screen and it will automatically focus where you touch.